was popping was popping was popping welcome to game moves i'm nikki that's moose what's up moose what up y'all and welcome to episode 103 <laughs> and on this episode we're going to be talking about business versus personal brands the lifespan of a creator uh something about this dude named andrew tate and why is he banned from social media uh what else we got we got oh of course we got kanye uh leaving the gap okay saw that coming saw that coming and more moose how are we feeling about this episode Man, this is where becoming too big can sometimes create some challenges for your brand and your business. So let's dive in and figure out what not to do. Let's get into this intro. Two kids from Queens, cut from a different cloth. Now joining forces, helping you to elevate your personal brand. Yeah, I'm talking about Nikki and Moose, bringing you a never before seen perspective into the mindset, the mentality, the behaviors, the driving force. But more importantly, the stories behind the people and brands that you know and love the most. And of course, this episode is powered by Ecamm Live, the number one all-in-one streaming platform that allows you to stream on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the social media platforms. Uh, at the same time, allows you to record audio, all isolated, different files, have a whole produce show, and much more. So if you want 14 days free on us, go to www.nickyandmoose.com slash ecam to get your 14 uh, day free trial. And we love you. That's Words it. of endearment. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you for plugging in. We love yeah. you. Yeah. Moose, how uh, are we feeling? Man, pretty good. Pretty good. I am uh, trying something new <clears throat> where I'm having uh, one cheat meal a week. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like uh, I never would have thought that I'm not having enough, say, fatty foods. But okay. someone brought it to my attention. They're like, you know, you might want to try having some more bad food. Mm. I was like, oh, OK. Well, I, I eat a lot of dessert, so I never thought that that would be a thing. But yeah, I'm, and I'm not complaining. Desserts. I'm just saying, I'm I'm just trying. I'm just trying something new. So I've been having these cheap meals, and uh, it's been fun, y'all. Thank you for uh, listening to my tell yeah. what I eat in a day. Yeah. <laughs> all the ch all of us chubby people are looking at you like, why? What? Why? What are you talking? Why is about? that? Why is that a thing? <laughs> why is that a thing? Why is, why that, is that, that an accomplishment? Yeah, <laughs> nah, it's it's pretty cool, man. It's pretty. We're cool. trying just, to take out cheap crazy. meals. No, right. shout out to the cheap meals. Yeah, it helps. You know, it's just once in a while. Listen, I think I'm making Fridays my cookies and cream milkshake at Chick-fil-A days. Nice. It used to be How, ma how many a, a day? More. Like, how many how, on that how Friday? How many a just day? One? One. Just, just one? What? Okay, what? Okay, okay. Hey, some people, look, I used to make that mistake, like, back, back in the day, I used to have a cheat day. And they were like, yo, it can't be a cheat day. It's supposed no. to be a cheat meal. Right. So I was Listen. like, oh, okay, I'm a bad. So I, I'm getting better, but yeah, no, no, yeah. it was it's one, it's one, and then okay, I'm right okay. back on my meals. I can just love it. I, it, it. It always is. There's a random itch. It's like, stop. You know you're chubby. Just go towards the light. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just go towards fix. the light. And I'm need like, fix. yeah, all right. I'm gonna go towards. I'm not gonna fight it no more. So that, I think I'm just gonna make it on Fridays. Uh, if I am not traveling, I, well, no, if I'm traveling, it should be even more, but we'll see. Mm. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll see how this goes. Um, let's just get into the episode because there's just a lot to talk about. A lot. A lot. So, uh, <clears throat> I found this clip and I thought it was a, a really nice, maybe possible debate, maybe possible. Right. Um, me and Moose don't always debate, um, but we don't always see eye to eye. So I found a clip that we could possibly not see eye to eye because Moose is very big into business and I'm very big into personal branding. So I found a clip that literally says business versus personal brand. So uh, this is uh, brought to you by uh, Sean Kennel. He's not sponsoring this. This is just, 
I found it. I know who, who the creator is. You know what I mean? So let's go right into it. We always say if you try and chase two rabbits, you end up catching neither of them. But I think if you can chase one rabbit and put some automation around it and some team around it, then things can get interesting. So I, I'm focused on building Think Media and Sean Cannell leads to that. But there's actually a personal brand that I'm interested in building. Like I have a YouTube channel that I don't upload on that'll maybe be more about leadership in the future. But even with 25 people on our team with an eight figure company, um, I don't think I'm ready to split and divide my focus yet. So I think that any Anything that splits your focus, uh, it should be avoided at all costs. I would focus on whichever thing is strongest to create the most amount of revenue that you could reinvest in team and automation that would then allow you the margin to potentially start something else. Too many people start seven things all at once when they should start one, grow it up, let it fund the next couple projects that you want to launch. Mm. So, so Moose, out of business versus personal, what do you pick and why? Well, uh, I mean, I definitely got to go the personal route. Oh, excuse me, the business route. Sorry, oh, sorry, I was about sorry. to say, to wait, the, you just ruined go, my whole no, thing. No, 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 no. <laughs> I got I to gotta go the business route. Okay. But uh, I, th I think the, the approach that he's describing is going to be for a very select few people. Mm. Right? It's not going to work, say, for everyone. Okay. Now. What I found through my experience is that, of course, I'm a big fan of being able to diversify your business portfolio. The reason why I say that is because sometimes being able to jump into other industries, you're able to acquire more knowledge that can help you in the current avenue or lane that you're in because it makes you more well-rounded. Now, in this case, there are some unique circumstances where you have to say, no, I cannot I cannot take on anything else. This is the only thing that I'm dedicated to mm -hmm. until we either sell or I make an exit, right? One of the two options, however okay. it is. But it's, it's typically when you are raising a ton of money, meaning that you got, say, Series A, Series B money, you have millions of dollars and in investors really counting on you. You're not just going to tell the investors, hey, I got a little side hustle. I know you gave me $20 million or so, but I got a little side hustle I'm working on in addition to this. So I'll be back, right? Obviously, when that is the responsibility you have to carry, you have to really commit to this one thing and be super disciplined toward that. You could be someone who doesn't like distractions. You actually really like to just do one thing at a time. You love to focus in and lock in on it. Me personally, and I'm not saying that that way is right or wrong. I'm just saying that me personally, I always find that if I stick with one thing for too long, I can often get bored of it. And having just something to be able to distract me from it from time to time, yet still allow me to grow my knowledge and, and learn more about other industries or ins and outs of how business is functioning in other, in other realms, it helps me make the current vehicle or industry that I'm on even better. So that I've, I've almost kind of jump-started you know, how I can navigate the business world. So I, I got to say I'm a fan of the business route for sure, but with a twist, because I know he's saying business, but you got to do it this way. Right. I'm saying business, but with a twist. So is it more, are you leaning more towards that because uh, you just see more of the benefit of just from a revenue standpoint of concentrating on the business rather than the other way around? Uh, no, it's, it's not even about revenue, to be honest with you. I, I think it's more so about the knowledge and how well-rounded it makes you as an entrepreneur. So the way, I, the way I started it was with my very first company, I started it with the plan of making it a, a business that funds my next vehicle or my next business. Right. And, and, and I think we spoke about this before where when I started the company, I named it Dream Supply. And I mm -hmm. said, this is going to be the vehicle that supplies my dream as well as the dreams for others. The industry that I was in, in the hospitality industry, we worked with a lot of people who were in transition or they were aspiring actors, musicians. I mean, I've worked with people from all walks of life, but they needed something that gave them a little bit of flexibility until they made their dreams of becoming, say, an actor either on Broadway or on brick screen of a reality. So that job is typically for them. So that's kind of how I, I called it that. But I want to say about maybe 18 or 24 months in is when I started to think about, okay, well, what's next? 
Mm-hmm. What what is the thing that I'm going to start kind of latching on to, to to build further or or really re- recycle the next thing, and that's 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 really what worked for me. So that's you know everyone's going to of course teach on their experience, and that's that's how I've done it. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Um, mm-hmm. I think for me, uh, I think the obvious answer is personal brand, um, and I think. For me, the reason is because I truly believe that you could get way more traffic with being the personal brand that brings the traffic to the business than leading with the business first. Because regardless of either or, you still have branding and marketing in place, right? And so with understanding that, what do people connect with? People connect with people. People don't necessarily connect with the logo or the product and service first. They connect with the people or the people that are involved with it or who have experienced it, right? It's always about the storytelling. So I think from the initial, how do I bring traffic? How do I, you know, how do I get people to recognize what I'm doing? I think you want to lead with the personal brand first and then plus, um, you know, there's different ways that can create revenue just off of a person. So you do have the business side, but then you have all these other things that still could bring traffic to the business side. So like, for instance, if you, I don't know, let's say you have, uh, I'll use deeper than the brand as a, as an instance, right? So we have, uh, programs we have like coaching programs but then we have courses and then we have memberships and then we have one-off workshops if i wanted to do one personally i just go through deeper than the brand it's my face but backed by the company right so when we did the you know the podcast one i i let it it went straight back to deeper than the brand because it was housed there and everything so for me, it, it's always going to be personal brand first. We love Tesla, but the, the, the person we, who brings up the stocks or drops the stocks is Elon, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the next person that we're going to be talking to, the personal brand uh, brought down, up and down the, st- the stock of a huge company. One that was killing it in the 90s, right? And I think it's also, it, well, both of the brands. Well, I'll, I'll tell you now. Kanye brought down, up and down, Adidas and Gap. So now that there's a conversation of some turmoil, what do you think is happening? It's going down. So that's because of the power of a personal brand. That's, that's, that wasn't because Gap is doing whatever, it's because Kanye is doing something and because of the influence can control or narrate what happens to a business. So I'm always going to say uh, personal brand just because yeah, no, of that I think power. It, it makes sense. And I think you're, you're like it's uh, one of the things that play to is influence and credibility. Mm-hmm. You know, there are especially for personal brands, there are some people who just naturally they've always been influential almost in everything they've done. They were natural leaders. People gravitated toward them. They didn't have to necessarily try to convince someone to follow them, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's almost just a natural way of doing it. But for others, I think you, you really, or just at least for, for the way I think about it, so mindful and meticulous about credibility and building a resume that speaks for itself so that you don't have to try and say, use your verbal or influence or persuasive skills to try and convince someone that you're the answer. But it's like, Mm -hmm. no, no, no. I have proof as to why. Now, in any event, once you spend some time in either vehicle, eventually you gather enough proof. You know, you get to say, hey, here's the results of my work after some time. But I think one of the things that the business also lends is that credibility piece almost off the bat. Like when we covered Shaq on last episode, my man, spent five minutes reading his resume. It's like, you're not going to question, you know, what, what his, 
accomplishments are when he has a resume or credibility of that kind. But for sure, I, I think that's probably one of the other the, the the two variables that that play into it as well. Yeah, and, and when when Sean was talking about, well, I you know I can't focus on both. I'm like, I, it, I think it depends on how you look at it, right? Mm-hmm. Like if if I'm going to lean on the company and I'm going to bring in the traffic over there, it's not about thinking of one or the other. One is the same, right? It's, it's, you have as a personal brand have became uh, an official brand ambassador, you know, the leading face uh, of that company. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's never really thinking of a, you should be looking at your personal brand. Like, how does this bring uh, authority to myself, but as well as bring authority to the company, bring traffic over there, and they clearly see that, you know, like you said, that there's a there's a different level when you're you have a business. Mm-hmm. Like, is it, it you're not just oh you're just a they're influencer, you're a content creator. That's cool. No, I'm this as well. So I kind of know what I'm talking about because I ha- and and we went through it uh, a little bit last week where majority of these content creators that are coming out, they're now branching out to be business owners or co-founders or you know um, being way more affiliated in the business world because they understand that. This is just to get myself inside certain doors and get certain opportunities to create something more of a legacy legacy standpoint for myself. But let's do the cheat code and use my influence while I still have it to bring it over there. And then I could, uh, you know, go into the sunset when that time period is done and my influence isn't as heavy as maybe it once was, and I could just go over there, but I've exhausted all that I can in this amazing time period where we do look at content creators as the new celebrities. We do look at influencers as the new celebrities. So there shouldn't be a reason where one person, uh, it could, can't do both. Not not right. knocking him, but I, I don't see how one person can't do both if the goal is still the business. I agree. I agree. It's probably one of the best ways to actually create marketing material for, like, there one creates marketing material for the other. They almost one hand feeds the other in a sense. Mm-hmm. So I, I agree with that a lot, actually. He agrees, people. I didn't think he was going to agree. I, I actually really didn't think this was going to go as smooth as it did. <laughs> like, uh. Oh, my goodness. All right. Uh, okay, people. Yes. Uh, team Kanye is here. AK just me is Team Kanye. I don't think most is Team Kanye. I think he likes Kanye, but I'm Team Kanye. Uh, so Team Kanye here, uh, here to address another uh, issue that Kanye has... Uh, I don't know, brought to himself or brought to the world, pretty much. As you know, uh, Kanye, or Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, partnered with Gap, and we've been seeing puffy jackets. We've been seeing clothes in trash bags. We've been seeing uh, doves. We've been seeing a lot of things when it comes to Gap and Ye. Well, In the past couple of weeks or so, there has been some turmoil, and uh, Kanye doesn't seem to be happy with Gap and has reportedly going to terminate the partnership with Gap. And, well, this is his uh, remarks. I'm the king, right? So uh, a king can't live in someone else's castle. A king has to make his own castle. I signed on with them because they had, uh, in the contract, they said they were going to do stores and they just ignored us about building stores constantly. And sometimes I would talk to the guys, the heads up, the leaders, and it would just be like I was on mute or something. 
So not to bring this up more on a like updated situation, um, more on a leveraging lesson, right? So honorable, uh, I can't even say the word, uh, mentioning, you know, the word I was trying to say, but nicely mentioned, right? Cause I can't <laughs> talk cause it's late now for some reason for me in my head. Um, 50 cent also, when we talk about 50 and stars with the whole power and, and everything that 50 is doing, his deal is done and he is leaving stars, right? So we're looking at two powerhouses with Ye and 50 Cent, and they're leaving. One is terminating, one is completely done with their deal, leaving to possibly do stuff on their own. Now, my thought process of like, how does this help for our brands and businesses is these, uh, these two have partnered with huge companies, right? huge platforms in order to start off their idea, start off their business, right? So when we look at Kanye, uh, Nike, Adidas, Gap, right? He's always partnered with somebody in order to put out whatever fashion idea he has, right? Though he owns Ye and, you know, the, the Yeezy brand, and that has been doing amazing, it is always still backed by a big company. So my, my thing is always, there is always a time period where you should leverage partnerships, collaborations. But when is it that when will we hit that expiration date before we feel disrespected, before we feel devalued, before it gets a little bit too much and it becomes ugly and drama, right? Um, more with Kanye than 50. I think 50 has, has, of course, been petty and stabbed certain things about stars, but it hasn't been to where, you know, the level of Kanye normally does. And even Kanye in, in this interview that I didn't cut up was that he may be leaving Adidas as well. I don't like, I'm not going to sit here and say that I didn't see that coming, but what would have been a better plan for it not to be so ugly? Like, and we, we, you know, we heard it in the clip as far as, you know, in the contract, there was supposed to be this and that and stores and the whole nine. And I didn't get that. But when you first saw that, couldn't that have been handled? Can you realize that this may not be the partnership that I was expecting? Because you left Nike for the, almost the same thing where it was like, I was hoping I would have more inventory. I was hoping that it would be less price. It wouldn't be so limited. And you left Nike. But now we're, we're going through the same things. Same things with Adidas. When, when should we leverage? When should we not? When should yeah. we leave? When should we stay? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, nothing to do with Kanye, but let's just talk about the actual tactics and the strategy behind this all. When, when you're in a relationship like this or a partnership like this, and you've been at it for quite some time, the first thing that you really are going to acquire is experience, right? It, especially depending on what the work style is. But I know that if, if you think about being able to work with someone who is the best in the world, you obviously want to work as close with them as possible to figure out what are their insider moves or what are their ways of doing things, their methods, their process, their system, whatever, that allows them to fulfill a brand or, or, or carry out a business at such a global scale. I mean, mm -hmm. they're absolutely dominant. Now, I've said this multiple times, and, and I probably sound 
uh, even mean for saying it, but I do think that we tend to lean more on the creative side than some of the boring things, or at least just caring or valuing things like fulfillment, shipping, right? That vertical integration part of the business that has nothing to do with the creative, mm-hmm. the, the thing that goes in front of the customers or the clients most often, right? There's a lot of stuff that happens on the back end. That's why a lot of these big name creators, influencers, music, whatever you want to call it, they often partner with these other companies, not because of what they're able to do, but because of the fulfillment part of the, the, the business. Adidas is going to be able to manufacture and produce hundreds of thousands, if not millions of units for Kanye and get them into the hands of the people without him having to sweat. All he has to do is work on the things that he's good at, which is phenomenal. But to answer your question about how do we make sure it doesn't get this far, I think as we're in those partnerships, we have to make it of interest to ourselves to want to learn what does the boring stuff look like? How does that boring stuff work? Because quite honestly, it's the boring stuff that unlocks these major opportunities and eventually doesn't put you in the situation where someone is no longer interested in how you're working or what your reputation is out in the market right now. So they don't want to really back you. They might steal your designs. They might do all of these other things. Well, in my opinion, it's always, hey, how can you learn the boring stuff and start to implement that or at least get some insight on it? Because until you have that down packed, it's going to be very difficult. And quite honestly, I think that's the difference between Tyler Perry and a lot of other creative entrepreneurs who are phenomenal, have dominated the space. But Tyler is probably one of the most vertically integrated businesses who does creative, but he also understands the back end and the fulfillment part of it very, very well. And he's constantly investing to build his production house and what he's able to deliver on. So now he's not under someone else's, say, muscle, or you got to be on their good side so that you don't get taken advantage of, he controls it. He literally controls it. Mm-hmm. So that, that's, that's where it's like, man, can we start gaining a little bit more interest for that part? Well, are we supposed to? Or are we supposed to delegate that part? Because it, the reason why I say that is... Because maybe the business person that is very strong in the business has no desire to be creative. But the creatives always have to try to learn both. But if it was the business person leading off first, they would probably just find a creative team to run the creative side. So my my question is, how is that fair if that is supposed to be the like the state like the Tyler Perry is the standard for creators when that's not the same uh, energy that we expect from just plain old business owners. Yeah, no, I I agree. And we don't know, say, the ins and outs of Tyler's team. Mm -hmm. But I would say if it's not the creator themselves, then at least someone on the team is that designated person who whose job is to work closely within the partnership to learn everything or at least at least as much as possible about those things that the creator can't necessarily do. Because, you know, you just got to look at it so many times. What what makes a Nike, a Louis Vuitton, all of these different brands so unique or so unique? It's it's their ability to produce, manufacture, ship and fulfill. But we don't necessarily often take interest in those things. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's just too, in my opinion, and I understand why, but I'm just saying we have to at some point, if we're fed up of these types of partnerships and deals going wrong, we have to start mastering the back end of things so that, say, the Kanye of shipping and fulfillment or, or whatever the back end of that industry is, imagine the Kanye of that meets the Kanye as the creator and they're mm-hmm. in partnership together. It's, 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 it's really that, that perfect blend. Well, I agree with that. I, I just think that when you go, when it's you versus a company and you are bringing in the idea, the, the line, the, the gap is gap, 
Adidas is Adidas, but I'm bringing in this skew, right? I'm bringing in this collection. It's hard to have say, complete say, with a powerhouse that way. Regardless if they are relevant or not, they do supply what he needs. So if there's not an equal understanding, and I think that's the, the problem with creators going into those types of partnerships where they expect uh, true creative range. And then when they have creative range, they think that applies to everything from the pricing to when it, the, the, the quantity, the, you know, plus the designs, plus the, like, what does having creative control truly mean? Because that, that plays a role. Because now you're saying, I'm coming in and I'm running your whole business. <laughs> and I don't yeah. think a partnership truly works out like that. Maybe no. as you're, you know, of course, your influence and in, in your celebrity status probably gives you more power than the average regular smegular who may be coming in with a collection idea. Absolutely. You know what let's say Kanye value is and what Kanye does for a brand. Once Kanye touches something, stock goes up. Indeed. Things sell out. We know the, the true value of Kanye. Do I believe he needs a big company? No, I don't. I think if he wanted to do it on his own, have some shops, have a strong online situation like he's been, I think that's fine. I think he has enough money. I'm not in this man's pockets, but I believe he would have enough to run to then flip it to do more, right? It's it's a struggle for me to see some of the 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 top creators go into a platform or a company and then get disappointed because they're not doing it the way they wanted to. But this is a, be honest, like, yes, you make a lot of money. Absolutely. Yes, the value is there. But you truly, at this point, don't need it anymore. You could have stopped at Adidas. Like, truly could have stopped at Adidas. Boom. I see what my sneakers are doing. They're selling out each time. The resale value is disgusting. My name has enough influence that if I was to drop a contact lens, it would sell out. Why am I going to Gap? Why, why am I going to Gap? I'm, I don't know. I don't, I don't get that. Yeah. No, I, I, look, I, I agree. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not even talking about Kanye's situation. I, I often talk about uh, ourselves as business owners or brand creators because there's always this perception of what the next person has you don't have right and so you're attracted to it you're looking at them and saying oh from a distance man if only i could be with them if only i could just be on the same if only and you don't realize that everyone has gaps and it's just as much good there's probably some bad that's going to be included in there as well. So I, I agree with the concept of being able to, even if it's not leveraging, but utilizing the experience to learn. So you do want to get closer, learn, utilize that information. But if you don't want to get burned over the long haul, the only way is to bring it back in house. I mean, that's just about the only way. Now, there's no guarantee and you do take on more risk. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's just, it's just, you got to pick your battles. Do I want to take on more risk and have more freedom or do I want to have less risk, but less freedom? Mm. You know, it kind of comes down to that. And, and, and for those who are super tied to this construct of having creative freedom, personal freedom, all types of freedom, 
then I think your only answer is going to be at some point, how do I bring in a lot of these constructs in-house so that I can be vertically integrated and not dependent upon other big brands, big platforms, big companies or partnerships that will eventually have a say in what I can and can't do. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I'm going to let you set this next one up about Andrew Tate, because I don't know yes. much yeah, about so, this man. <laughs> yeah, me, me neither. Quite honestly, I was very intrigued today. I uh, follow some of Patrick Bed David's videos and uh, his uh, platform or YouTube channel is called Valuetainment. So I was preparing for the show today and came across this four hour interview between him and Andrew Tate. Right. I was like, good God, this is like some Joe Rogan, Kanye, uh, three part interview type I'm, thing. Side note real quick. I'm realizing that podcasts are going longer. Like I follow Drink Champs and now they're like averaging three hours. Three hours. It's weird. I noticed that. Yeah, it's a little, it's a, little, it's a bit much. It's a lot. But but I, I just listened into about the first 45 minutes and of course kind of started looking up into the story. But from what I've been, what I've been able to summarize from it is that this is someone who has, who took a very strong stance on social media with most of his videos and his content, even from years ago. Yep. Uh, took a very strong stance just around a man's role in society, uh, not listening to the powers that be or whatever that case is. And eventually, a lot of his clips started being edited into short form content that went viral on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And so he was portrayed as someone who is a danger to society and was stripped of all of his social media platforms. Hmm. Now, I'll let you play the clip and then I'll kind of tell you the two parts that I thought really are lessons for us as people building brands or businesses that we can take away from it. Okay. I have no reason to be banned. My Instagram is just cars. Like, yeah, it's just cars and, 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 and a little bit of flexing. There's no polit politics. There's not even any points of view. I had no strikes, nothing. It's just a hit piece. So everybody already knows I was banned because I talked against, against the Matrix. They just know the system fine. in general. The system in general, yeah. I mean... Now, now it's interesting because he kind of contradicts himself a little bit, right? He says, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't do anything. It's only the cars, but I talk about against the system. Now, mm -hmm. however you want to spin that at the end of the day, the big, the big story here, or the reason why he's getting so much, so much publicity is that he was banned from all social media platforms, discord, YouTube, Instagram. I'm talking about every single one, almost right. as if he was Donald Trump in a sense, right. uh, completely wiped out without any notice, without any reason why, he was just completely taken down. Now, here's the part that I found very interesting. He said that this also impacted his bank accounts as well as some of his Stripe accounts. Mm. And so this is the part that I said, okay, forget all the gossip and is he a good person, bad person? I have no stance. I don't really know too much about him. But it is important for us to take into consideration as we are building brands and businesses online, to know that although we look at this as only social media, that now it's getting to a point where a lot of these governing rules are starting to put it in a way that it can even impact your money, such as your bank accounts, your Stripe accounts. I even think he said his Uber account got deleted. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? It's like a little bit extensive. A little bit much. Yeah. So for me, I was just like, man, I would have never thought that something gone wrong and social would ever go to the extent of possibly impacting someone's bank information or their ability to, uh, you know, distribute and collect money or bank money, house money, however you want to say it. So that to me was a first time thing like, whoa, people should be mindful about this. The second part of it, of course, is uh, this construct of taking a stance, you know, I under, and, and I'm a big fan of this. One of the lessons that I always want to talk about is getting out of the middle not being neutral gray. You should really take a stance on one side or the other because trying to be politically correct about every single thing really makes you seem as though you can be bought or sold, right? You, you really don't have any values that you stand on. But you do want to be mindful of being so, so, so extreme that you just break the totem pole. And eventually that's what happened here, right? He just kind of got on the wrong side of a few people that said, whoa, 
uh, yeah, no, we, we going to get you out. So right. just some, some things that I thought like, man, and this is not somebody who I know, who I knew about maybe three months ago. So just to see something go to that extent and have seeing him gain that much attraction was kind of crazy. Uh, but now I think what he's saying is that he's also going to other platforms. I forget what the name of the platform is, but it's Rumble. a competitor. Yeah, a competitor of YouTube where he said in what he was, what took him five years to build on YouTube, he's done almost more or just as much in two weeks on that platform. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we got options, y'all. It's like a uh, worst case scenario. I'm not saying go out here talking about cursing out the system, but uh, no, right. <laughs> well, in I mean, worst case scenario, there are options. Yeah, I think uh, to start off with that platform, I think that's the one where uh, like Trump supporters go. Because it's like free, like no censor to that one, right? Got it. Um, so that's why he's he's living and chilling over there. Because uh, I I don't know if that's the one that Trump went to, um, or if it was another one. But I know when I looked up Rumble, it was like Trump supporters, Trump supporters, Trump supporters, right? Because due uh -huh. to censorships and things like that. Now. For me, I'm not I'm not big on the censorship because like the platforms I will say this. If you guys watched the interview, there were certain points that made sense, right? That a platform can wipe out a whole other side of an argument. So it kind of narrates a certain story where we don't know from a healthy debate side, we are not truly a society that gets to f pick what's right or wrong. It's normally created through media, what's right or wrong, and because of what they push, what they put out, what they create. So from that standpoint, I, I was like, I kind of get what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. um, but at another one, I, I'll always go back to we do not pay for these platforms. So we actually have to kind of go by their rules and not sit and complain or be a rebel and do the complete opposite and then be like, I don't know why they banned me. Mm. What do you mean you don't do you? You're saying the most outrageous stuff, you know, uh, in the uh, what was it in the interview? They they were comparing other people who were banned and they brought up this tweet of somebody who was talking about the vid. I'm not trying to get banned or anything. So you know what that is. Um, and you know, it said some, whatever, it just that, that person's opinion. And I guess it was the opposite of what society knows of the vaccine and things like that. So he got banned and, uh, Tate's, the uh, response was like, I don't understand why it's logical reasoning. Like why, why are we getting censored off of our opinions? Right. Mm. And, and I get it, but we have to play smart in order to get what we want and everything. I don't care if we like it or not. Everything is politics. Everything is a, is a game. If we're trying to get something, we have to play the game. Like it or not, whatever. There's, there's, there's an easy way of doing things. There's a hard way of doing things. There's a compromise. Like I, I'm not going to totally give in, uh, but I'm not, you know, both. I'm, I'm going to do both. Not saying to do the rebel way is impossible. But there's going to be a lot more obstacles that can be avoided if you understood just how to go around the game. And if we're talking about social media, I know not to speak about certain things. But what I can do is create exclusive content on a different platform and speak my piece on that. Right. I don't have to say it in public. I'm, 
if we do that, we already know it's for clickbait. We already know it's for attention. Do that to those people who may want to know your your inner thoughts and what you honestly think about, uh, you know, politics and what you honestly think about what's happening in the health industry and think like do that. But and and I was I was reading more into it and because I was like I've, I've seen this dude multiple times. And never understood what the big deal was, why he was banned, never cared to learn. Then as I'm digging more into it, I'm like, oh, you just say the most reckless stuff. And then you're like, why? Right. And granted, a lot of people have said reckless stuff and have not been banned. Uh, You know, rest in peace to Kevin Samuels. He said a whole bunch of reckless stuff. Right. Right. But also, how do I want to put this? You, he probably, let's use the example of Kevin, Kevin Samuels, rest in peace. A lot of people took certain clips and created it to make it look a certain kind of way. Now, granted, the man still said something, but there was probably a whole backstory if you watched the full video. I'm I'm not saying I've ever seen any of this man's full video, but I do give people the benefit of the doubt that what we may see in a quick clip may not be the full story until we watch the full one, right? So understanding that if we see that one or two times, let's act right. If If, if we don't want our pockets checked, if we don't want our awareness checked, If we are trying to truly grow a global brand that has impact, let's play it properly. If we're not going to play it properly and you want to look like the rebel and this is I'm going to be the new leader of this whole thing. Absolutely. Go ahead. For me, I'm not going to take that route. For one, I don't truly like talking about controversial stuff. I stay out of it. If it has nothing to do with me and mine, I stay out of it. I'm not trying to be the the revolutionary leader of anything that's just me <laughs> shout out to the yeah. people who do right 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 i'm not so i'm going to the, and there's certain topics even me you have like eh, let's stay away from that boom 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 you know just because one i think not everybody needs to speak on everything That's it right there. Yeah. Yeah, It's a fact. Not everybody needs to speak on everything just because we now have the tools to do so. Doesn't mean we have to. Right. Now, if we feel very strong about something, absolutely speak your mind. Right. But please don't tell me you feel strong about everything. Mm -hmm. Don't don't do that. Don't you're waiting for the platforms to shut you down. You're you're playing with it, but let's look at it from a from a business side, right? From a yeah. now that he's banned, yeah, everybody's searching who he who is he, where can I find his material, what exactly got and he could leverage that hmm. as the season is still happening, right? So it it's a it's a win-win situation. You can make back what you lost if you want to play that route, right? I don't know if that was intentional, but if if it was intentional of getting banned everywhere, this, that, and third, just so I can create people to come to this platform or to create on my own platform, put a certain paywall to it, now I have a strong community that just wants to know what I'm saying or the blogs that just subscribe for that certain second just so they can rip it and put it on their own blogs. However it is, I'm actually winning because now people are speaking about me and I'm going to take advantage of that. I promise you, leverage is so important to master. And if you don't know how to do that, you're going to get caught up in a lot of L's and a lot of loss opportunities. Yeah, nothing else to follow. I think you said it, though. Not everyone should speak on everything. 
You know, when thinking back to the episode, sorry, last week where you said, uh, you know, that's like, how do you stay away from jumping on different trends? It's that mm -hmm. right there. You know, it's when you start to feel the pressure that you got to create at any means necessary or at any cost, and you start speaking on stuff that you shouldn't be speaking on. Then you find yourself in a sticky situation. Like, how did I even end up here? That's fine. And it, it, you know, it's like, s s stay, stay focused. Stay in your life. So for our last topic, um, how do you stay relevant? As a brand or business, how do you stay relevant? How do you figure out what's what, right? Um, and we saw an interview with, what's his name? What's uh, his name? MKB? M MKB, is it? No, it's a lot of Shoot. initials. Shoot. I think it's Mar Marque Brownlee, Okay. I know his last name is Brownlee, okay? <laughs> See, you, look, We're okay, so people, I suck with names, me, all right? Guard, but I'm with you, I'm with you. I, I, it's, we, it's, uh, I think it's Marquez Brownlee. Oh, damn. Hi, I'm Marquez Brownlee. Marquez Brownlee, but it's okay. Whatever. I'm with you. I'm you with know, you. The, the big tech guy, That's the, y'all know the, <laughs> the black tech guy, but bear with me, okay? Isaiah, just bear with me and just... Edit whatever you need to edit. <laughs> but um, y'all know my heart. Y'all know what this means. Anyways, start from here, Isaiah. From the Because I know you're going to put all of that in there. Start from here. So uh, one of the biggest uh, tech people on YouTube had an interview. What's his name, Moose? Hi, I'm Marquez Brownlee. Mar Marquez Brownlee. Okay. Heem. Heem. Why are you even saying it like that? Heem. <laughs> Right. Um, was talking about the lifespan of a creator. Right. And this is what his answer was as far as do you feel like there is a certain lifespan to creators? Are you worried about, you know, your topic being irrelevant? So let's let's talk about it. Yeah, I think no, just because uh, people will always be somewhat interested in the latest tech. People will always be seeking that out. Uh, and so even if I'm you know, not worried about being the number one tech reviewer in the world, I still feel like that will always exist and I'll always have fun being a part of that ecosystem. Ooh. So I wanted to bring this one up because it's important to be doing something that is not seasonal, especially if we're creating a brand around it that is going to have a strong business model, right? You have to pick topics. You have to pick a market, a niche that is probably going to last longer than 10 years. That's just me. You know what I mean? Now, some people do create brands and businesses off of certain trends, takes that, you know, and, and uses it for other stuff. You know, it's a good example of that. Shout out to all the Halloween stores. You know what I mean, that's real. They pop up out of nowhere. Too much. Right. Like for a few months. Yeah. And it's not even like in that week or like months. Yeah. Like yeah. I think they start August or something. Finding their certain pop up locations. They'll. They'll uh, do that because people prepare for their uh, Halloween joints for months, but then they're gone. Right. And I'm point. like, how do you make a, how do you make a, <laughs> but Hey, make their money for the year in two months right. and they're out. S yeah. Same thing with the uh, Christmas tree. Shout out to the people. who sell the Christmas trees at the end, like, like at the street corners, at the certain plaza, however you go about it. Right. So if you do that in order to make a certain uh, amount of money to then focus it on other places, cool, right? If that's your if that's your strategy, that's a strategy. That's actually somewhat of a smart tra uh, strategy, right? But if you're thinking about long term, what is something that people will always talk about as we have grown with tech? With all the latest updates, all the different gadgets, tech is going to be always one of them. Uh, we talked about Leninja, the cooking lady, 
last episode. And what do you think is always going to be relevant? Cooking. We need to eat. Some people want to learn how to cook on their own or see all these different experiments that she does. It's very relevant, right? So when, and this is just a quick kind of lesson. When we are picking what do we want to do and what is, what is going to actually bring us longevity as well as money down the line, it's the, the topics, it is the market, it is the niche that isn't going anywhere for a very long time. I mean, like fitness is not going. We have us chubby people who always need fitness. And then you have your buff people like Moose uh, who will always need fitness, right? Who will talk about needing cheat meals more more often. And all yeah. us chubby people be like, mm. but, <laughs> <laughs> like really? but it, it, I mean, in all honesty, it's like, it, it's just that simple. Are, can we honestly talk about this for 10 years? If we cannot talk about this for 10 years, why are we doing it? Can we, can we be as passionate about it? What was so important, what he said was, I don't care if I'm not the number one uh, tech person after so many years, I still will find some love and passion in this particular ecosystem. I think that's huge. Like, no matter where you rank in the industry, you will still have love for it to do it because you know there's always going to be traffic. There's somebody who's going to listen to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that, that's a that's a really good point, and I like that. It's like at the end he said, even if I don't want to be number one, at least I know I can be doing it for quite a long time, right? It's yeah. like that that longevity in your income. But it's true, and 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 I think a lot of it also comes from us jumping into something way too early, mm. and 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 there's just a lot of balance that has to come with this because. From one side, yes, you want to jump in because you're never going to be perfectly prepared. I don't mm -hmm. think perfect preparation exists. There's always something that you can improve upon or look further into or learn a little bit more about. But at the same time, you don't want to go in, in there just off of pure excitement. It's like, mm -hmm. man, I think this is going to be the greatest life-changing thing ever. I'm going to jump in right now. Mm -hmm. And you have no real idea of you know, what does it mean to be in business? What does it mean to have a brand? What are some of those unique etiquettes that go along with it? And then as well as what is that specific industry? What's the history and what's maybe the future prediction of it? So I, I feel that in that particular case, somebody might jump into something too early simply because they're excited or they saw it work for somebody else and then it expires on them, right? Mm -hmm. I think we go back to some examples, of course, uh, for somebody, and by the way, one of the best documentaries to watch for every brand, business owner, creative entrepreneur, whatever, uh, block, is it Blockbeck, Blockbuster versus the world or Netflix versus the world? One of the two, but just look it up. I, I, I got it, I, I, cause I saw, I saw the wall back, but it's, it's awesome. It's a, okay. it's, a, it's a great documentary that shows you how Blockbuster obviously was dominating the world. Yes. At least in that media realm. Netflix came up and they were going at it neck to neck. And I won't spoil it for y'all because one of them almost took the other one out and then boom, something else happened. Well, you kind of know the story, but anyway. I was like, we all yeah, know the story. <laughs> but it's, it's still, Not it's gonna still ruin for you, know. but it almost but didn't happen. It but it's crazy. Guess I just which never... one is still living? <laughs> Guess which one is out of business? <laughs> no, but it's, it's just crazy, man, because I never, I didn't know that they were actually at one point competing with them neck to neck, even, mm. even despite the, the incredible innovation that they brought to the marketplace, which, which Netflix did. But my yeah. point is, you know, information like that really helps you to see how do you make sure you're not blockbuster in, right. in, in that scenario, right? Or being in a dying boat, hanging on to something that's dying because it's what you've always done. So there, there are some examples out there that can really help you get an idea of, okay, when is a good time for me to jump? When should I stay pressed down because this is this is the wave? This is facts. This is facts. Listen, people, we appreciate you. Uh, of course, once again, this is powered by Ecamm Live. 
Uh, everything that you see is done by there. Follow us uh, on all social media platforms at Nikki and Moose because of y'all. We are doing amazing as far as kind of the followers and the subscriber count. That's only because you keep sharing it. You keep commenting and we appreciate that. Of course, we got an after show for Apple Podcasts. So if you are an Apple Podcast listener, go check out the uh, the after show after this. Clearly, after this. Drops every Wednesday. So that's going to be vibe. Uh, Moose, final words. Yeah, yeah. The one thing you can't get wrong is your story. So tell it. Tell your story. There are people out there who need to hear what you have to say. So I'm encouraging you out there to just share your message and tell your story. 